building of the Quonset Hut hangar at the Adelanto Air Park was a family project. The footings for any structure is very important. Here we are pouring the footings which had a raised stem wall. So while wet, I tapped the forms to get out any air pockets. We poured the slab extra thick from 6 to 8 inches in case I brought some heavy vehicles onto it. As you can see, it is a large area and we did a really nice smooth finish to it. The weather did not cooperate for us. It was really windy at times and we could not assemble the arches and lift them like recommended. Assembling the arches in pieces was really time consuming and slow. The winds at one time hit 70 miles an hour and it was like a storm, so we didn't work. People told me we should have at least three arches assembled and tied down before we called it a night. So finally we got a break in the weather, winds under 10 miles an hour, and we raised the nine piece arches with a forklift. With the stem wall, I decided to assemble the arches with an underlap. This hanger was in kit form, so you have to follow instructions as to where to place the seams. When we raised an arch, we tied it in four different places to prevent damage during the lift. Each arch is about 70 feet long and only 24 inches wide so you must be careful not to twist or dent it. The winds mostly come from the south, so I wanted to do the overlap towards the north to keep the dirt and rain out. This hanger took about 5,000 bolts and we got it down to assembling four arches fully bolted per day. We did apply the Buell caulking tape before lifting and bolting the arches. As you can see, the underlap that we used was a little more time consuming, but I didn't want to deal with the stem wall that we would have to drive over every time. We used the scissor lift to help us snug each arch together before we started bolting. You hear the term, do as I say, not as I do? Here Kevin and I only have one club between us. And Randy says, we got this. When we started this project, I brought gloves for everyone. I didn't want any metal cuts to happen. And I can say during the whole assembly, we only had one small cut. Once we had the arches assembled, we started to assemble the end wall. We bolted the two trim panels on it and then measured the end panel and marked it for cutting. It would have been helpful if stickers were placed on the end panels to tell you which side goes up. Once we determined which side of the end panel was the top, we marked and cut it to fit and install it. So now the next chore is to build a bathroom. It is a requirement that every hangar at the air park have a bathroom. So we did the framing, rough plumbing, and electrical, and called for inspection. So while we waited for inspections on the bathroom, we called the septic tank guys to come out and put in the septic tank. We marked the area, and they started digging. Once the hole was dug, a truck came over and laid the septic tank in. I was not told ahead of time for inspection you had to fill the septic tank with water, which was a thousand gallons. Thank God my water tank had 5,000 gallons in it. When that was done, the leach pit was dug some 25 feet down, and then it was backfilled with brick and gravel. Then the installers put in all the plumbing for it and we called for inspection again. So the bathroom framing, plumbing and electrical passed and it was time to cover the bathroom walls. The drywall installers were called to hang the drywall. Soon we waited a few days for the patching to dry and then we sanded and painted the bathroom. 
We installed the lights, sink, fixtures, toilet, and the bathroom was complete. Next was to install security cameras, solar panels, and security lights. The biggest job came up to put the hangar doors. We elected to build our own because we had a structural engineer and an expert welder available to us. The footing was dug and formed and the concrete was poured for the lower rail of the doors. Here we see Randy leveling the dirt after we remove the forms. Here Kevin and Randy are installing the lower track for the doors. Next we had Chris, our welder, weld the door frames and we brought them over. The door frames were heavy so we called in for a little extra help. Here our inspector killer gets a closer look. Each door panel required three wheels because each door was 20 foot in length. The next part of the door assembly was to weld a header of 40 feet for the hangar opening. Chris, our welder, did an excellent job and one of our engineers was on hand to supervise. At this stage, Chris did all the work and we just stood around to help. is built and now it's time to take it over for installation. It is nice to have the welding shop so close for transporting it. Kevin, Randy and Chris transport it over. Here you see our four-legged inspector who is a Trump supporter. All the way. <laughs> Pause for Trump to save the day. The truss is then mounted and bolted to the hangar, and the legs are bolted to the concrete. So here Randy pulls out a cell phone to record Kevin drilling. Now the truss is up and in place, and we start to put the upper wheels on the door frames. We install the door frames and test again. Killer, our on-site inspector, has to give the okay to proceed. With the upper wheels installed, the frames glide smoothly on the track. Killer goes in for a closer look. We install knee bracing to give the truss and doors solid stability. We added more than what is shown here. We now remove oils from the truss and frame and paint both to prevent rust. The tin covering is next. We ordered the panels to fit, so we had no cutting on the door panels. We bolted them on with self-tapping screws, and that was not hard to do. Come on! We installed hold downs inside the hangar doors for security and to prevent the wind from moving the doors. We put some extra steel reinforcement behind the side panels for strength and security. During our work, my neighbor across the runway, Charlie Lear, takes one of his planes out for a flight. Now filling the upper portion panels were a pain because again, we had to use the scaffold and a long ladder to get up there. Each piece of panel had to have a custom cut to fit the radius of the hangar. Here Kevin bolts in the last piece of tin.
The next thing we have to do is mount four poles and secure them to the hanger to hold up the upper track of the doors. So we drill four bolts to secure the plate to the concrete. With Killer's approval, of course. So the doors are done and we just need final tweaking to the wheels. So before the doors are totally complete, the ultralights are ready to move in and make it their home. So my wife Marcia gives me final approval of the hangar building. I want to thank my family, friends, and relatives that made this build possible. <laughs>